it's a lovely day again. Ideal boating weather. Pity I'm not on the water yet, but my day will come. Just giving you a quick walk around here. Now that I'm actually in the field. Those marks there are from the residue of the grit blast in the sands on the roof. It's obviously rained and uh, that's what you can see. Well, as you can see on the floor here, it resembles Gaganess Beach rather than a field where boats are sandblasted. Once I've swept that away off the roof, next time it rains, I'll be out here with my mop and I'll clean all that off. Hold on. Well, I've just arrived. First things first. In the real world, I'll be making a pot of tea. Well, a cup of tea. Got no electricity yet. So, let's do the next job. Get some sort of hook on the wall. A sophisticated coat hook. Should do it. There we go. Any visitors can put their coats on the banisters at the bottom of the stairs. Well, if we had any. I haven't even got any stairs yet. One thing I do need to do is to set up a work area. So I've got a, a frame here on a couple of wheels, put that together, put a bit of wood on the top and I've got a workstation, well a temporary workstation.
as it is when you've got a boat moored in the field. That should do. Yeah, I've got, a good, got to do a good sweep up as well because of the uh, spray foam and the uh, sand that's collected from when it was uh, Grit blasted. As you can see, we're sort of uh, sorted. I've got my uh, desk area, come measuring, planning area, and when I've got a solid top on there, I can obviously use that as a uh, bit of a workbench as well for light woodwork. I'll just have a quick uh, wander around. I've got a stainless steel water tank here which is all spray foamed and I must say the uh, spray foaming in here on here has been an absolutely uh, brilliantly it, everything's been uh, taped most of it's been uh, pulled off there should be very little cutting back to do there's already first fix of uh, tantalized roofing timbers here and I'm going to fix Another set on on top of these, probably two by one or two by one and a quarter, whatever they, their measurements are. So there's very, very little uh, foam to cut back. And I must say, it's pretty much evenly spread. So there's at least, at least 25 mil on there throughout. Everything has been done. Obviously, I'll have bits to do around the uh, windows. Tell you what, that is pretty uh, warm. And the sun's not really out yet. Uh, that's what I certainly noticed when I came in here for the first time yesterday. How warm the uh, boat was. Anyway, yeah, so that's a water tank. It's a reverse layout, so this will be the bedroom area. Two portholes at this side. You'll notice the frosted porthole here. This will be the bathroom area. It's probably a bit of a giveaway. I've not decided yet whether to have a walkthrough or a corridor bathroom. The way I've designed my window placements, it gives me the... Uh, the options and then <coughs> bathroom will be five feet I think that's what I've got on my uh, plans might be six I think it's five so that should put end about about here so I've actually got a a 12 to 14 foot lounge I believe as you come in the boat at the stern of the kitchen there'll be a couple of two feet wide cabinets either side and then we'll drop down and it's going to be a galley kitchen or a galley galley can you say that galley galley oh well i just have it'll be six feet each side it might be a little bit more on the starboard so I've got my duck hatch or side hatch here and this is where a dinette come extra sleeping capacity in the form of a, a double bed will be situated I'm still not sure whether to have a typical dinette where you've got the table in the middle or to have an L shaped if it's L shaped it might well I might well have a, a seat here and the L will come around here so you're actually facing the duck hatch with the table, the table here with the option to extend the table obviously that will drop down so that's then your double bed for visitors who might want to come on board and share a bit of beer with me 
we've cleaned up a bit let's try and get some uh, <coughs> electric sorted out first thing we've got to do is to get into this Arctic cable I'll tell you what there's obviously a lot of copper in here because this stuff 100 meters of it weighs a blooming ton the sun's coming out and it's good stuff this really really flexible I mean some of the stuff you buy uh, well it's like barbed wire as far as the flexibility is concerned but this is the uh, McCoy right let's just cut a bit off for of the uh, initial tail from the consumer unit Dear. Probably help. The pliers worked on every well on every terminal terminal. What we'll eventually do on every terminal on the uh, twelve volt wiring will be a connector or a blade or a spade connector but I'm going to do that as well on every certainly on the I'm going to do that as well on every terminal on the uh, mains uh, wiring right so this is the uh consuming in it which is temporarily going to go there on a backboard which you'll see in a minute and then hooked up to there will be my again temporary uh, hookup that would normally be on the uh, outside I'm not going to drill through the uh, boat at the moment so that will just come around and that will hook up to the unit there and the unit will be placed just temporarily on a bit of this scrap OSB that I found in my store at home it already happens to be cut to a size that will fit and that's just going to uh, do me for the next few weeks so that should be nice and flat and it is so I'm going to fix that into position drill a hole in the back of the in fact I don't need to yeah I need to drill a hole in the back of this uh, board drill a hole a couple of holes in the uh, back of the consumer unit it's hard polyurethane unit it's not a metal unit that I'm using at the moment if you put a consumer unit in your house now to comply with the 2018 regulations I think it has got to be a metal case but because this is classed as a garage unit you can still use the hard plastic or polyurethane I think the polyurethane or thane units in a uh, garage or in a situation where you might get to uh, where you get might get moisture anyway let's get on with this any no such thing as look at right, before I do anything else I'm going to turn the radio off 
or YouTube will uh, strike me. Just don't forget to countersink the holes when you're putting the backboard onto the wall of the cabin. Always looks neater. It's not necessary in this instance because it's only a temporary fix, but uh, well, why not do things properly? And I'm using inch and a quarter on uh, here. Inch and a quarter number number eight screws. As you can see, I've just put a temporary extension cable onto the wall and connected to the consumer unit with a a standard household junction box. This will be going very shortly and I'll be putting a, a double socket in there. But we're not on the water. It doesn't uh, have to comply to boat safety certificate regulations at the moment and it is safe. So that's what we're doing for now. It's a nice day again today. Really nice and bright. Well, that's my uh, that's where I'm sitting when I should really be uh, be working. I've just sat there all the time, drinking tea and eating. Well, some of the time. Anyway, you see, I've cleared up a bit, swept all the floor, tried to get rid of a lot of that uh, sand from the grit blast. Tomorrow I'll bring up a small brush and dustpan which will uh, help and then I can get the uh, the dust off the well there's some on the roof which I need to clear off and also some in the uh, well deck otherwise when it rains it's going to be like a uh, a mud pit in in there one of the things that I've got to do is to trim back the foam where it meets the wooden battens so I can get a second uh, fix on there. I'll be using the same type of batten, 2 by one inch, but I need to make sure I can get right to the edge with the fixing of the batten that's already on there. therapeutic this so all I'm doing is removing any excess there so my next timber will fit on top you'll notice I've got the same situation on the uh, ceiling here so where my battens will come across I don't want them catching on this. I don't want that foam here impending on where the my fixing goes. This of course under here is the uh, steel. All that can stay. My battening is probably going to be another inch so as long as it's less than an inch from here or whatever size you choose to have your battening then it can stay. It's not, it's not in the way. This needs to stay because this is actually covering the steel infrastructure, the ribs. And the ideal of foam is to cover every bit of the steel, one, so it reduces condensation. Well, there won't be any because it's in direct contact with the steel. And two, it gives you the uh, insulation qualities. I'm using a, a Devault multi-tool to do this. This is the brushless cordless one. 
I've got a mains one which I used to use but I tend to have switched over to a lot of the brushless tools now two reasons really the brushes never wear out because there aren't any and secondly they start instantly and they finish instantly which is great when you're planing or when you're uh, sawing wood in particular next time you join me I should have all the cutting back completed and then I'll be ready to attach my second fixing of timber supports